Hello, this is Tony Hiller from RealClimateScience.com. Millions of people have seen Climate the Movie since it came out last month. The climate empire is upset and they are striking back. Michael Mann is the Darth Vader of the climate scam empire. Rather than addressing the contents of Climate the Movie, what Michael Mann is doing is attacking the participants. Last week, he accused me of being anti-Semitic based on some paper which had nothing to do with me. Had he bothered to do any actual fact-checking, he would have known that I'm a Jew and I'm married to an Asian. My beautiful wife, Kyrie, is not only a top-rate climate realist, but she also makes all of this beautiful jewelry. Chris Martz tweeted, Dr. Michael Mann called Tony Hiller anti-Semitic twice this week. Had Mann bothered to do any background research, he'd be aware that Heller is Jewish. Mann also thinks anyone who disagrees with his distorted line of thinking are truly awful human beings. Mark Ceres from the National Snow and Ice Data Center responded with a rather impressive non sequitur. Tony Heller, a.k.a. Steve Goddard, makes his living as a climate change denier. He has also pushed conspiracy theories over Sandy Hook. I've dealt with him before. And this was followed by a similar tweet. Fossil fuel lobby group, the CO2 coalition, linked climate denier Tony Heller is debunked in this new video where he's cut out misleading his followers on Arctic sea ice. Heller is also a Sandy Hook conspiracy theorist. Yep, he's really that awful. Let's take a look at that video in its entirety, and then I'll show it again and comment on it. Sometimes you come across human-induced climate change deniers and skeptics on social media who are often professional disinformers and conspiracy theorists. They often monetize their disinformation via their websites and through advertising revenue or via fossil fuel lobby group funding. Here's an example, Tony Heller, also known as Stephen Goddard. Heller is a member of the fossil fuel lobby group funded CO2 coalition and Heller is also a Sandy Hook conspiracy theorist. Some time ago, Heller blocked me from commenting on his social media commentary after I discovered an elaborate trick he was using to confuse his followers. Tony used this image claiming it showed that Arctic sea ice was lower in the last century than this century. Here's how he tricked his audience by using a mislabeled graph. The graph he shows is not in fact the annual mean Arctic ice cover. How do we know? Because we can find the original text translation of the paper he cited, which is Vinikov et al. from 1980. Now, two things to point out before we take a look at that translation. Heller often mistakes sea ice extent and sea ice area. Sea ice area is the total region actually covered by ice. Extent is the total region with at least 15% sea ice cover. And as a result, extent gives a higher value than area. OK, let's dive in. The original translation is available online, and Vinikov produced an annual sea ice cover graph, but he also showed cover for each month. But Heller used only the late August ice cover graph, when sea ice is very low, but suggested it was annual sea ice by using a mistranslated version of Vinikov found in later documents. This is why it's key to go back to the original sources. Of course, even if we look at the observational sea ice records, back to 1850 for shipping surveys, we still see a clear decline after the 1970s. If we look at this century, we still see Arctic sea ice decline, and it is lower now than in the 20th century. Oh, and by the way, don't be fooled by short-term variations and Heller's cherry picks. It is best to look at global sea ice, or even better, global ice on land and sea, which continues to decline each decade at an accelerating rate. And as the land ice goes into the sea, it contributes to sea level rise. That was one of the sloppiest and most poorly researched pieces of propaganda I've seen. Let's take a look at it again, piece by piece. Sometimes you come across human-induced climate change deniers and skeptics on social media, who are often professional disinformers and conspiracy theorists. They often monetize their disinformation via their websites and through advertising revenue, or via fossil fuel lobby group funding. Here's an example, Tony Heller also known as Stephen Goddard. Heller is a member of the fossil fuel lobby group funded CO2 coalition, and Heller is also a Sandy Hook conspiracy theorist. That's an utterly ridiculous claim. I don't have any advertising on my website, and I'm not paid a penny by the CO2 coalition. 
Like most members of the CO2 Coalition, I do my work pro bono because I'm concerned about the misinformation coming out of the climate scam cult. I was using the pen name Steve Goddard because at that time I was working for a green company which I knew would fire me if they found out they had a prominent climate skeptic working for them. And that's exactly what happened. The day after I returned from an EU climate conference, they walked me out the door. As far as Sandy Hook goes, note that none of these people reported what I've actually stated. I used to work near Sandy Hook Elementary School and rode my bicycle past there on the way to the office. I've done a lot of research showing how Democrats have distorted the tragedy and used it for their political gain. I think it's very disgusting how Democrats have used the blood of children to push their political agendas. Now let's continue with the video. Some time ago, Heller blocked me from commenting on his social media commentary after I discovered an elaborate trick he was using to confuse his followers. Actually, I blocked him because he was spamming me with distortions and lies. But let's continue. Tony used this image claiming it showed that Arctic sea ice was lower in the last century than this century. Here's how he tricked his audience by using a mislabeled graph. The graph he shows is not in fact the annual mean Arctic ice cover. How do we know? Because we can find the original text translation of the paper he cited, which is Vinikov et al. from 1980. Now, two things to point out before we take a look at that translation. Heller often mistakes sea ice extent and sea ice area. Sea ice area is the total region actually covered by ice. Extent is the total region with at least 15% sea ice cover. And as a result, extent gives a higher value than area. OK, let's dive in. The original translation is available online, and Vinikov produced an annual sea ice cover graph, but he also showed cover for each month. But Heller used only the late August ice cover graph, when sea ice is very low, but suggested it was annual sea ice by using a mistranslated version of Vinikov found in later documents. This is why it's key to go back to the original sources. He's blaming me for what he claims is a mislabeled graph on the 1985 DOE report. This report was the predecessor of the IPCC. Figure 5.2, annual mean and five-year running mean sea ice amount in the Arctic Ocean from 1920 to 1975. I had nothing to do with that report. At that time, I was teaching science to high school students in Arizona. I've never conflated sea ice area and sea ice extent, and he's shooting himself in the foot with that argument. If the area dropped by 1 million square kilometers, then the drop in extent would have been even higher. He's nitpicking nonsense which had nothing to do with me. And normally, climate alarmists want to use the amount of sea ice in the late summer, but this time he's complaining about it. But let's continue listening to his absurd propaganda. Of course, even if we look at the observational sea ice records back to 1850 for shipping surveys, we still see a clear decline after the 1970s. If we look at this century, we still see Arctic sea ice decline, and it is lower now than in the 20th century. Note that he started his graph in 1979. But in the 1990 IPCC report, they showed satellite sea ice data going back to the early 1970s. He started his graph at the peak year of 1979 and hid the inconvenient data from the early 1970s when sea ice extent was significantly less. He's accusing me of cherry picking when in fact it's actually him who's doing that. We also know that Earth's snow and ice cover increased by 12% from 1967 to 1972. In 1970, the New York Times reported the United States and the Soviet Union are mounting large-scale investigations to determine why the Arctic climate is becoming more frigid, why parts of the Arctic sea ice recently have become ominously thicker, and whether the extent of that ice cover contributes to the onset of ice ages. In 1975, it was reported that ships making for Iceland ports have been impeded by drifting ice for the first time in this century. It's not surprising that in his efforts to misinform the public, he cherry-picked the peak year of 1979 to start his graph and hid the inconvenient data prior to that. 
In 1958, the New York Times reported, some scientists estimate that the polar ice pack is 40% thinner and 12% less in area than it was a half century ago, and that even within the lifetime of our children, the Arctic Ocean may open, enabling ships to sail over the North Pole. The 1985 DOE report was correct. It showed very low amounts of ice around that time in the mid-1950s. But by the mid-1970s, Arctic ice was expanding very quickly. And the ice was also becoming ominously thicker. Everything this climate scamster was claiming is patently false. But let's continue with more of his nonsense. Oh, and by the way, don't be fooled by short-term variations and Heller's cherry picks. It is best to look at global sea ice, or even better, global ice on land and sea, which continues to decline each decade at an accelerating rate. And as the land ice goes into the sea, it contributes to sea level rise. So let's take a look at today's global sea ice extent. It's slightly below the mean since 1979. Once again, he is spreading absurd misinformation. If we look at long-term tide gauges, like this one from Germany with a 180-year-long record, we can see no indication that the rate of sea level rise has accelerated. If ice was melting faster than in the past, we would see an upwards curvature to this graph, but it does not exist. This graph is fairly typical. Almost none of the long-term tide gauges show any upwards curvature. And the small percentage which do show an upwards curvature are suffering from other issues affecting their measurement. There is no accelerated melting, Every claim from these climate scamsters is patently false. Toto's been pulling back the curtain on this climate clown show for 16 years. You can visit him and his family on the web at realclimatescience.com.